Today's lecture, we will be discussing causes and mechanism of cell injury. Our learning objectives, to name the different type of agents causing cell injury. To understand the mechanism of cell injury. Let us list the causes of cell injury. Most common oxygen deprivation resulting from ischemia. Physical agents such as extremes of temperature, change in pressure, radiation, accidents, electric shock. Chemical agents such as poisoning from metals, drugs, alcohol, narcotics, herbicides. Infectious agents such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites. Immunologic reactions. It could be autoimmune disease or the dreadful anaphylactic reaction. Genetic derangements such as mutation and chromosomal disorders. Nutritional imbalances. Hypervitaminosis, hypovitaminosis, protein energy malnutrition, obesity, anorexia nervosa. It is thus very clear from the list that cellular injury can be caused by a wide variety of injurious agents. It could be grossly visible, it could be at the microscopic or genetic level. Let us now study the mechanism of cell injury. It depends on the type of injury, duration and its severity. If the injury stimuli is mild, it gives the cell a chance to repair or in other words we can say the injury can be reversible. However, if the injury stimuli is strong, it can be lethal and the cell may die instantly. It depends on the type, state and adaptability of cell. Let us take example of the cardiac muscle. The cardiac muscle is highly susceptible to hypoxia. The cardiac myocytes will die if they are deprived of oxygen almost immediately. Whereas the skeletal muscle fibers of the periphery, the limbs, they are robust. They can withstand hypoxia for a much longer time. Functional and biochemical abnormalities. This will constitute a major part of the discussion now. So, what are the functional and biochemical abnormalities? Well, they are illustrated in this flowchart. So, you have injury stimuli causing a decrease in adenosine triphosphate here, decrease, uh, damage to the membrane increase in intracellular calcium and causing release of reactive oxygen species. So let us look at a very closer level. First, starting with depletion of ATP. ATP is high energy phosphate produced in two ways. Oxidative phosphorylation of ADP, adenosine diphosphate and by glycolytic pathway. We should understand the uses of ATP. What is the requirement of ATP? It is required for membrane transport, protein synthesis, lipogenesis, deacylation, reacylation reactions. Major causes of depletion of ATP are reduced supply of oxygen and nutrients, mitochondrial damage, action of toxins like cyanide. Depletion of ATP in as many as 5 to 10 percent of normal cells has widespread effect on many critical cellular systems. Let us look at the consequences of decreased intracellular ATP. So, how does ATP decrease? It can decrease if there is decreased production. Decreased production meaning injury to the mitochondria resulting from ischemia. Now, when there is decreased production of ATP, we have a failure of the sodium pump leading to influx of calcium, H2O and sodium and efflux of potassium resulting in certain morphological changes. 
as the aerobic respiration is affected, the cell or the body compensates by resulting in anaerobic glycolysis. This anaerobic glycolysis increases, resulting in increase in lactic acid. As a result, there is acidosis, a fall in pH, resulting in clumping of nucleochromatin. Thirdly, there is detachment of ribosomes, causing a decrease in protein synthesis with lipid deposition. Secondly, mitochondrial damage, resulting from loss of mitochondrial membrane potential and leakage of membrane proteins into cytosol. So, there is a membrane potential here. That gets lost. When that gets lost, I told you the function of mitochondria to produce ATP is hampered, resulting in necrosis. Secondly, there is escape of cytochrome C. This cytochrome C escape leads to apoptosis. The next mechanism is influx of intracellular calcium and loss of calcium homeostasis. Now what happens is the concentration of calcium in cellular injury increases intracellularly. That results in activation of ATPase resulting in decreased ATP. Phospholipase causing decreased phospholipids, proteases resulting in disruption of membrane and cytoskeletal proteins. Now these two will lead to membrane damage. Okay, I'll be discussing in the next slide. And endonucleases causing nuclear chromatin damage. Fourth mechanism important is accumulation of oxygen derived free radicals. We will be covering an, another video on free radicals exclusively. So these free radicals can be released from inflammation, radiation, oxygen toxicity, chemicals, reperfusion injuries and they are of different types O2, H2, O2, OH, right? They have an unpaired electron. So free radicals are chemical species that have single unpaired electron in an outer orbit. Reactive oxygen species are type of oxygen derived free radicals produced during mitochondrial respiration and energy generation such as in inflammation. Oxidative stress is an important concept. When the production of reactive oxygen species increases or the scavenging systems are ineffective, it results in excess of free radicals. In a nutshell, free radicals can cause membrane damage. So I have now discussed membrane damage. So the fourth, fifth mechanism of membrane damage is nothing but a summary of what we have already discussed. What we have discussed is when the mitochondria fails in its function, there is phospholipid loss. Right, and when there is increase in cytosolic calcium, there is another mechanism of cell injury that again leads to phospholipid degradation and lipid breakdown, and that can again cause protease activation with cytoskeletal damage causing membrane damage. So, with this, I think we have covered the mechanism of cellular injury. These are the references I referred to. Please like, subscribe, and share this channel.